Hey guys, even here, so it's been two days since the Arnold Classic UK, but I accidentally stumbled upon this high quality footage, I enjoyed watching it, here you can see very clearly what happened, so I decided to go over this show one more time, and this time analyze all the poses, pose for pose, compare all these guys in top 6 and then also top 3, so you can see exactly what happened. I don't know if you guys are gonna enjoy watching this, but I'll definitely enjoy making this kind of video, make sure to let me know in the comments if you enjoy this kind of video, Videos, maybe I can do more of them. So let's start with the first pose, front double bicep. As you can see, Andrew Jack was on the left and he won this show very decisively. You can see that in the scorecard. The judges had no doubt who is going to win this show. As you can see, Andrew Jack, I redlined his name. He had a perfect score in both pre-judging and finals. Patrick Johnson, who I blue-lined, was very decisively in that second spot, which was kind of surprising to me. I thought it was between him and James. I thought it was a little bit closer, but apparently it wasn't at all. Who was close is the two guys I highlighted in yellow. As you can see, Martin Fitzwater and James Hollingshead. So in the pre-judging, James was leading, and then uh, in the finals, it was a tie, but the pre-judging matters more, so James was in that third spot. Let's Let's go on with the front double. First, let's check out this top three. Obviously, Andrew Jack definitely looks the most impressive here. Even though he doesn't have the angle, James has the best angle here. But you can see, like, especially how much his biceps are popping. He has craziest biceps in this lineup for sure. Also, his waist is small and he has details in the abs. Definitely the best details here. Far better than those of James, for example. Lats are also the thickest. They're popping the most. And also, he has the best separation in the quads. James had enormous legs, also pretty small waist, but he didn't have any details in the midsection which is one of his biggest flaws, and not for the lack of trying. He says he has been training his abs almost every day, and as you can see, he didn't really do much of a job with those, because genetically they're just very, very shallow, and even if he flexed them, even if he didn't stretch his stomach like he did right here, it wouldn't be much better. Uh, Patrick Johnson was able to flex his abs a little bit more, so he shows more detail and a better retaper, smaller legs, but also fine details. Now, if you compare James to the other two guys, Martin Fitzwater and Mark Hector, Mark Hector was completely off with conditioning. So let's not even compare him to the top three or the top four. He was fifth and there was no chance of him being third, if you ask me. As you can see, Martin Fitzwater, he looked great, like his conditioning was good, but he has some flaws that you can't change in a prep. It's gonna take him longer than that. It's gonna take him an entire off season, at least to improve some body parts like his arms, his biceps should be more peaky his chest, his shoulders, his legs and his back are fine, but he still needs more arms, shoulders, chest, so he needs more mass. Mark Hector's problem last year was mass, however, it's not a problem anymore, as you can see, he is really massive, what he needs to work on is conditioning, and I don't think it was a body fat percent issue, I was watching his progress photos, he looked much leaner before the show, and I don't think it was just good gym lighting, I think he spilled over or did something wrong during the peak week, so I'm sure in next show, whichever one he does, he's going to look much better, and he has a good chance of winning whichever show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. Martin here same issue like I mentioned before, he just needs more muscle, and the same thing is with Jamie, but he needs a lot more, and also he, he should, I don't know if he can, but he should try to improve that leg imbalance, so you can see his right leg is smaller than his left one, I don't know if that's even fixable, when you have an imbalance in your chest, in your lats, in your arms, you can do unilateral movements, and you can improve that, but when it comes to legs, in order to keep your legs big and full, you need to do compound heavy movements, like squats, like heavy leg press, if you do those stuff with one leg, that's probably not gonna work out, so that's probably gonna be a flaw that he will have forever, but that's not his biggest flaw, the biggest flaw is just overall lack of mass. He's obviously a giant, he's bigger than everybody else in this lineup, but he's just too tall, he needs more muscle, he has a good structure, it's just gonna take him some more time, and I hope he will eventually succeed. As far as the front lat spread, from this angle at least, I would consider giving it to James Hollingshead, because he has a small waist, he has enormous legs, and he has so much thickness through the chest, through the shoulders, so he looks really impressive right here. Patrick Johnson, his chest is a little bit too flat, and his legs aren't as big as James's, and also he doesn't have craziest detail, so honestly I have James looking better in this pose. However, Andrew probably looks the best in this pose, but you're looking at this photo from the angle and he's bending backwards a little bit too much, so it looks weird and it looks kind of flat. 
he was flatter. He wasn't as conditioned as Texas. He was definitely worse, but he still probably looked the best, though you can't really see it in this pose, in this, in this shot from this angle. Here I have James winning. And James was obviously the biggest guy right here, you can see it especially from the side, you can see the thickness, the crazy thickness he has chest to back. In the side chest, unfortunately, because of this dude's head, you can't see Patrick Johnson's legs, but you can compare Andrew versus James. And James had a lot more thickness, like I said, from the side, not only in the upper body, but in the lower body as well, even more in the lower body, especially in those quads, like he has crazy quad height, and also he has really thick hamstrings and glutes both, and also his glutes were way sharper than those of Andrew, so I think he killed him in this side shot lower body. As far as upper body, James, even though he has thickness, his arms could be bigger, his shoulders could be bigger, and his chest is okay, but Andrew just has a little bit more of that pop, he has more detail, but you can notice that he isn't exactly a thickest guy, he has crazy aesthetics, crazy shape, crazy structure, but there isn't really that much thickness like James has, so honestly looking at this photo, I have to say I have James winning this pose, side chest, I have James. When they turn around, when they show us their backs, again, you can see that James is definitely the thickest guy as far as the lower body. But as far as the back itself, he probably also has the most thickness. But he doesn't have the structure, he doesn't have the width that Andrew Jack, for example, has. As you can see, Martin was definitely the most dominant in both back lats, but and back double. But it simply wasn't enough. Let me show you a little bit better video, a little bit more close-up video of the top three. So you can see what exactly happened over here when they switched these guys around. So at this point they realized Andrew is winning, so he's in the middle. And then they have Patrick Johnson and James Hollingshead in that top three. So this is what I was telling you before. When Andrew does this kind of a front lat spread, from the front directly, it looks freaking impressive. I mean, take a look at the depth of the abs, the separation in the chest, the width, I mean, the, the crazy lat pop, the details in the legs, the size of those tree trunks. Like, he was so, so dominant. But in close second, I have to say, I had James Hollingshead. I don't know why the judges were so sure that Patrick Johnson beat him. When I was watching the pre-judging, Samson Dauda was uh, sharing a live stream and he said that if he was a judge, he would give Patrick Johnson that second spot and he wasn't sure about the third spot. He was between uh, James and Martin, I believe. And I don't know if he was talking about the way the judges were moving the athletes or what he saw, because from what I'm seeing, I have clearly... James in that second spot. He was the biggest guy right here. He was bigger than Andrew, he was bigger than Patrick, and he was in good conditioning. As you can see in the lower body, he was more conditioned than Andrew, and he was thicker than him. I mean, pound for pound. Of course, Andrew was bigger, and from what I heard, he was 10 pounds lighter than Texas. So he was smaller and not more conditioned. He was just simply he was just simply worse than Texas. If Texas was 80%, then this was like 70 tops 75%. And James was at his absolute best. Could have James been sharper? Sure, especially through the back, lower body. Not really, but I think this was his best overall package, and I hoped it would be rewarded. It was rewarded by that third spot. Again, a medal at this kind of a show is still a big achievement, but I feel like he deserved to be at least second. I don't see how Patrick Johnson beat him. I won't see that throughout this entire video, throughout the poses. If you guys see something I don't, you can tell me down below. Maybe Patrick was a little bit sharper, but I don't think that was enough. Andrew was not exactly super conditioned, especially in the glutes and the hamstrings and the lower back. He wasn't exactly peeled and he still beat everybody. And now we're gonna take a look at that back double bicep that we paused earlier, so I wanted to show you this more close-up video. Here you can see exactly what is going on. So for example, glutes and hamstrings like lower back, there is no doubt that James is absolutely killing everybody here. His glutes were definitely not the thickest, his legs were the biggest, his conditioning was arguably the best here. Now as far as the top part, he had a lot of thickness in that back. Andrew Jack didn't have that kind of thickness, neither did Patrick Johnson, but they both have prettier structure, they had better structure as far as the width of the back, they had more lat pop, it just flew better, it was a better V taper, so I guess that's an argument for why these guys beat James in this pose, but is it enough? You guys tell me. Now we are about to see the back lat spread and this one is really impressive, look at Andrew Jack, 
look at this how magnificent does this look how wide he actually is look at his freaking back wow wow conditioning not good not even close to being good like there are no separation no hardness no lines in the hamstrings in the glutes he should definitely change that as you can see patrick johnson had more separation had drier hamstrings and glutes and james also was drier and harder to the glutes and hamstrings but you know as far as the structure like <laughs> andrew is just so blessed man like the way he's shaped is just insane and i guess he was kind of lean enough his back was pretty lean still and james looks much better in the back clad spare than he does in the back double but i still have to give this one to andrew as far as second here i have james i have james for sure guys take a look at this tell me why would you have patrick beating james in this pose i i'm pretty confident after watching this higher quality video that james was absolutely robbed I mean, there was probably something that you could see in person that I can't see, or something that judges know that I don't know, whatever the hell it is, but from what I'm seeing in this high quality, good video, I have James easily, easily in that second spot. If James was a little bit drier, I think they would have given him that second spot. Look at James' back, look at the thickness, wow. So again, I think the reason why they gave it to Patrick Johnson instead of James is simply that conditioning, the dryness. And you can see it pretty clearly here in the side tricep. You can see it in the shoulders, in the chest, in the, in the triceps, in the arms, in the side leg even, yeah. And you can see that Andrew, his side leg looks very soft, very, very soft. There are no cuts no separation nothing whatsoever as far as his upper body you can still see that he could be thicker so i don't have andrew winning this pose not this variation at least this variation of this pose i give to patrick johnson actually and in second i would have james and andrew would come in third but when andrew turns from the front and he shows his crazy detail in the legs and overall shape and structure yeah he looks the best but that's not really side tricep that's like front tricep so does that even count i don't know in the abs and thighs you can see again what i was saying before james just has super shallow abs while andrew's abs are really symmetrical really prominent also from the front he shows great shape off the legs small waist popping lats he just flows so well in this pose patrick johnson looks also pretty good i think he looks better than james so in this one i would go andrew patrick and then james in his most recent video james pretty much said that he probably won't do next show next week which is yamamoto pro show france because he feels like he needs more time uh, he wants to get leaner but he wants to do that in a non-aggressive way because he is careful not to lose any muscle so if he did that in one week he's scared how much muscle he would lose so he probably won't do Yamamoto Pro France I think he said he won't do it so next weekend we won't see James versus Patrick I hope Patrick is gonna do that show as you can see both him and James are on that list we also have Lionel Biaki who is probably going to drop out and we also have Jamie Johal but James just said that he probably won't do that show he needs more time so next show winner is going to be probably Patrick Johnson and he's going to the Mr. To Olympia unless Lionel Biecki somehow finally shows up and he actually brings good conditioning that that would make a good battle I don't know what would be the outcome but I think Patrick is going to win that show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia and James is going to win one of the next shows that are coming up Martin Fitzwater is also done for the year he made a post on his IG and he says that he was very disappointed and he needs to improve so he won't keep competing as far as Mark Hector before this show he said that he wanted to do another like three or four shows we are not seeing him on the list for France Yamamoto but I think we will see him again this year and I think he will qualify for the Mr. Olympia as well now as far as this last pose right here most muscular it was really tough to find a single moment where all of these guys are hitting the pose because it's literally like whenever you pose at least one of the guys is relaxed and is doing another transition another variation of most muscular this is the closest that I got and when when Andrew does this pose properly I think he's just the best all the poses from the front Andrew wins but the way it is right here I have James and I have James beating uh, Patrick Johnson in all the most muscular variations so once again guys I don't see 
how Patrick beat James. The only argument that you could make is conditioning. He was a tad tighter, a little bit drier. But is that really enough? Should that be enough? I don't know. Whatever you guys think, however you feel about this outcome, tell me down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed this kind of a video, tell me down below if you want me to make more of these kind of deep analysis videos. And thank you guys so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.